Welcome back to The Dish with the Paddock Prince and yours truly, Ed DeRosa. Back from New Orleans, David is heading down to the Florida Derby, but for now we're both in the Commonwealth where the Kentucky Derby will take place in five short weeks, a little more than that, five weeks from Saturday anyway. David, you're going to see the champ in person at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I haven't been in the Florida Derby since Always Dreaming one, I think, was the last time I've been. So I'm looking forward to it. I went to Turfway last weekend to see two Phils absolutely dominate the Ruby Stakes and look good doing that. I know you were at the fairgrounds and you saw Kings Barn walk around the track. So, yeah, it's heating up again this weekend with two big preps. Yeah, and South Lawn as well, uh, one of my better bets in a while. So I'll give myself a I was a happy for you there. and Norm Cassie. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Great job, Norman and Ray Lou. Uh, getting another Oaks Mount this year. Before we get into this week's 100 point to the winter preps, wanted to do a little bit of a reset. Uh, I know you uh, jumbled around some of your top 10. Let's take a look at that now. No movement up top, though. He's been there since uh, he returned in style in the Florida in the Fountain of Youth Stakes, and he'll be odds on in the Florida Derby this week. Uh, Forte on a collision course with Derby favoritism. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, unless Forte throws in a clunker this weekend, I would expect him to win this weekend and then be go on to be the Derby favorite. Um, yeah, like you said, there's not much movement. I put Kings Barn at five. I know everybody's on the two Phils bandwagon, but I know they were different races, but two Phils was losing to horses that Kings Barn's just destroyed. I know the pace scenario was a little different and all that, but I still have him ahead of two Phils. Um, you know, you got Rocket Can at eight and Reincarnate at nine. They're going to run against each other this weekend in the Arkansas Derby, Derby, so there should be some more movement. Four and six are running against each other in the San Anita Derby, so these are all starting to heat up, obviously. Yes. Uh, yeah, we're, we're similar in the top two, uh, and then even Skinner and Go Rocket Ride. Among mine, uh, I do it fair odds wise, uh, which is uh, maybe a little apropos given that uh, there is a future wager this weekend. And I agree with you. As of right now, I do have Kings Barnes ahead of two fills. Uh, two fills got a much better figure in the Jeff Ruby stakes. I just I have some distance concerns with him. And uh, apparently we're just totally ignoring that the Jeff Ruby stakes is on a different surface than the Derby. Uh, now, you know I am very forgiving of that. I have picked the horse coming out of Turfway, I think, three of the last 15 years. So I have no issue with synthetic horses going to Kentucky. But it just seems like it's not even – it's an afterthought here, whereas in previous years everyone would be like, well, it came on synthetic. Well, the Derby winner obviously did come last year from the Ruby Stakes. But <laughs> I just – yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do with two fields. I think he's a very good horse. But, I mean, Major Dude ran second. He's more of a turf horse. They're not even going to the Derby. I saw they're going to the, I'm sure, the American turf. So, while I think he's a good horse, he might get a little, I don't I don't know what his odds are going to be in the Derby, but I feel like a lot of people are on him now. So, I feel like he might get a little overbet and not create as much value as he should because I saw he got a good buyer. He got, I think he got a good rag number. So, I think his numbers came back strong across the board. So, he's definitely a horse that's going to take too much money, in my opinion, but. I wouldn't shock yeah. me if he came third or fourth with his running style. Love Ravelli. Jareth is easy to root for. It's a it's a great story, but uh, there, I think there's significant steam where I'm going to trust my read on the distance limitations and not mm -hmm. take a short price. I'm going to bring yours up again because neither you nor I, yours is a top 10, mine was a top 19, uh, but neither you nor I have in our top 10, and I didn't even have in my top 15, the UAE Derby horses, uh, it sounds like, or at least reads like, based on your top 10, you agree with me that that is not the path to get the roses. I just never know what to do with those horses. And I feel like every UAE Derby, whoever gets the elite kind of just rolls around the track. I feel like it's the same race every year. Mendelssohn this year, this, the one that just happened a couple of days ago. I just, until they win, I know Japan has been dominating on a world, world tour lately with turf and dirt, but I mean, until they win, I gotta. See, I can't use a horse out of the UAE Derby. I just never. I never know what to do with them. I just. I kind of just look at them, and they all look the same to me. Last year, they did. Was the horse coming out of the UAE Derby that set that wicked pace and that yeah, helps? Yeah, uh, well, Crown Pride was the winner, and then the runner-up was up there too. Summer the something, yeah. He. Um, yeah, that's it. Summer in Saratoga. Uh, some I don't know Saratoga, but uh, I, I like the good vibes about Saratoga, but I don't think it was Saratoga. Um, yeah. I'm not using those horses until they win. I'm 
I'm not, I wouldn't be shocked if this one ran better, I guess, because Jap, Japan has done well, but not for me at the moment. Yeah, agreed. Uh, and, they, and they just they take money every year. It's not like they're under the radar. Uh, well, let's shift uh, to this week's action. We'll start with the Arkansas Derby, uh, which I see is absolutely 100 percent the more competitive of the two races. And uh, these are my fair odds, but it's also the field and post position order. Uh one thing that uh, caught my eye about this is we get Rocket Can coming out of the Fountain of Youth, Angel of Empire from the Risen Star. Reincarnate was uh, local when he was third behind Red Route 1 and the DeSormo Colt. So uh, this to me is a good mix of horses coming from different jurisdictions. Might give us a, a better read on where the top talent is. I don't really, I'm not too bullish on any one of these going forward for the Kentucky Derby, but I do think Rocket Can is the horse to beat. What do you think? You know, I don't like agreeing with you all the time, but I uh, I don't know if I agree with you all the time. Actually, I agree with you on this one. I do like Rocket Can in this race. I don't, I don't know what to do with a horse like Reincarnate because people always bet these horses that have these bad trips. I feel like they never, ever win when they come back. He's going to get bet pretty heavily. We all know he wants to be closer to the pace than he was last time out. So he's a horse that I don't think is going to offer enough value in the wind pools. I'm sure he'll go off as a favorite. I know you have Rocket Cannon fair out to five to two, but I think Reincarnate will be the favorite. Um, there does look to be speed in this race. The three and the four horse look like they can really get after it early. So it should be a fairly run race, not like the Louisiana Derby where one horse just walked around the track. So I think there's going to be real speed in here. I like Rocket Can to win. I think Angel of Empire and Red Route One are the two horses that can pick it up, um, pick up the pieces and run second and third. I don't, I probably won't use Reincarnate, but I just this horse has been with the Acteen now. He was on Baffert's training in his last year. I don't know what to do with these horses either. Yeah, I, I, I like Rocket Can. I mean, I thought even though he never really threatened for the win behind Forte, I, I thought the horses around him, Cyclone Mischief, uh, perhaps cycling back to his top after the bounce, uh, ran well, uh, made certainly, uh, you know, given his seasoning, uh, has right to improve, which we'll get to in the Florida Derby. So I thought he, he was the best of some other decent ones around him, whereas I really can't say the same for others. I mean, maybe Angel of Empire, but his number just did not come back fast enough to merit a short price here. Uh, and I'm with you on Harlow Cap. I actually initially when I did this had him, I think, 18 or 20 to one. And then I saw his rag is in sheet and he would just have to run such the best race of his life to be a win contender here. I, I bumped him up to 30. And then when you consider what you mentioned about there should be an honest pace along with him, uh, I felt better about making him 30 to one. But uh, he's certainly going to be a, a threat early. We're, we're going to hear him get a call. Uh, but I just think it sets up for Rocket Can perfectly. Yeah, the thing about the Risen Star was where Harlow Cap and Angel of Empire come out of, it was a quick pace and it aided Angel of Empire. While the pace could be hot again, people are going to see Angel of Empire beat two fills, but two fills ran a much, I think he ran a better race than that. He made the first move into the hot pace and he just he just couldn't hold off the closers like Angel of Empire. Yeah. Another thing about Rocket Can is, I think it's good. He didn't run a great figure in the Holy Bull, but he was super wide that day. But then he came back to improve that in the Fountain of Youth, and this is going to be his third race this year. So I think this could be another race where if he can improve four or five points into the 95, 96 buyer range, that he would be, I shouldn't say a likely winner, but I think that would put him right there at the end of this race. Agreed. Well, that is the Arkansas Derby, and uh, I'm going to pull up the Florida Derby. Red Route you know, 1 gives me um, Barber Road vibes. I don't know why. Uh, of course, yeah, I could see that. He just is always right there. People are going to bet him because he oh, he needs more distance. It's just one of those horses. <laughs> like, so. No, that's a, that's a good analogy. All right, from uh, Arkansas to Florida. Again, these are my fair odds, but they are in post-position order, so Forte down there, number 11. Four to five, uh, the post does not bother me. And I, I'm not sure if you saw what Travis tweeted about it, David. Uh, and I actually agreed with him once I kind of really dug into this field. There are some, I mean, the, the horse on the rail has zero chance. I made him 500 to one to make a point. But I'd much rather be on the far outside than worry about getting pinned in by these horses who have no shot to win this race. 
I mean, I when I look through this race initially, I mean, there's like seven horses that should not be in this race. Like, I don't <laughs> know, I don't know what's going I mean, on. I said with five, it. but I mean, there's horses like Il Morocco. He's never he's ran one race as a seventy. Uh, yeah, it's just seventy buyers ran one race. It's just, I mean, you got private purchases from Oakland. I mean, I don't know what's going on in this race. I just don't. <laughs> the more you go through the field. If you tossed Forte in this race, let's say, like let's say he wasn't in this race, I have no idea who I'd pick on top. I don't know. I don't know who the second likeliest winner of this race is. I guess Mage is a horse that people are going to try to play again. He didn't break great last time out. He showed real speed in a seven for a long race. He's getting um, Sias today. I guess that's a horse people are going to try to beat Forte with or use with Forte underneath. But I just I don't see Forte losing. I don't think the outside post is going to be as bad as people think because. Maybe a horse or two or scratch. If they don't, he can break well and he can just he can just sit three or four wide. And I just don't I don't see anybody that's near as good as him that can run a race that he can run. I agree. Uh, you know, Cave Rock, what, what, however he comes back at three is immaterial. At that point in his two year old season was absolutely the horse to be in the juvenile and Forte handed it to him. And Cave Rock uh, was game for second. It's not like, you know, he, he threw in a complete clunker and backed out of the field. Forte just beat him on the square. There are no cave rocks relative to his talent level last November in this race. Fort Bragg interests me a little bit. I'd love to see Mage and Cyclone Mischief take the second and third money. I actually like Fort Bragg to win the Sunland Park Derby and feel like I missed out on maybe a chance at a four or five to one score, given what we actually saw happen. And I'm wondering if the connections are wishing they had, had stuck with that plan because they could have had 50 points and be in the Derby, but second here would be good enough. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the exacta probables. And if Fort Bragg is not the favorite under Forte, uh, I think that's the opportunity. And, and I'll just, uh, you know, play a, a straight exacta because like you said, I mean, I don't know who I'd pick if Forte weren't in here, but he is. And if Fort Bragg isn't the favorite underneath, then that's the way I'll play it. Yeah, when the race comes to – I think Mr. Ripple, you have him at 38-1. to 1. I think he's 30-1 to 1 on the morning line. I think he's a horse that maybe can fill out the exactor tries. But, I mean, I'm with you. I think the pace is going to be hot. you got a couple Safi Joseph private purchases. The number five horse, Mr. Peaks, is – I mean, he's going 22 and 45 in six furlong races. Mage will probably go. I mean, there's going to be speed in this race. Cyclone Mischief is probably going. He went last time. So I'm sure they're going to be aggressive with him again. So, yeah, I just Fort, – Fort Bragg will probably scoot over out of the gate and sit sixth or seventh, and then maybe um, Forte a little behind him, and I could see them Forte passing him in the lane and then running one, two, and I might throw Mr. Ripple in there at a little price. Let me ask you this. If Forte loses – are you are you out? On it him? depends what happens because I actually thought about this. If he runs second and let's say he's four or five wide the entire race, he never gets cover. I don't know if I would be out. If he ran on clunker second or third, like he had a good trip, he got in, I would probably be out. But he's got to yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's funny. He could run like a 93 in this race, a 94. And unless somebody jumps up, he's still one in the race. I mean, nobody right. – yeah, there's only one horse that's ran over a 90 buyer, and that's Fort Bragg. Nobody else has even ran in that range. So, I don't know if it's going to be interesting with his post, but I just – I don't see it happening. Yeah. No, I mean, he, he can stay out of trouble, and uh, we have not mentioned, although uh, we usually do, so now's the time. He has the right jockey. I mean, yeah. this, this guy is it's going to figure it out. If if not mm -hmm. him, Luis Saez um, would be right there. And it's a good colony, but I read um, just – He's riding in these races. I mean, it's reminiscent to me of when Joel uh, was in the zone in and out of his career, which he is not in right now. But, um, you know, he, he has the right guy on his back to, to navigate that post. And I would I have him four to five on my fair odds. I'm not sure I'd take the plunge. But if, you know, for, for whatever reason in this 12 horse field, if he were even money, I would absolutely bet him to win. Yeah, I don't know with so many horses, and some people might get scared away with the post. I see him at three to five, four to five. I don't yeah, know. No, I, don't I, I think he'll be one to two or three to five. If he but wins convincing, maybe the exacta. Yeah, but if he wins convincing, let's say he wins by a couple lengths, he gets a good figure. What would his derby odds be tomorrow if the race was tomorrow? Two to one? Well, five we're going to find out because there's the future wager this weekend. Uh, he's five to two on the line. Uh, yeah, I think two to one. Um, 
we've just seen, you know, the UAE horses with the Japan mixed in. That's going to take money. Uh, two fills got a. I mean, that realistically, that five and I think he got a five and three quarter, five and a half. Ragazin, that's faster than anything Forte's ever run. Realistically, he could be the fastest horse on the sheets going into the Derby. Not saying that means he'll be the favorite, but it it will attract some money. I think two to one's the floor for. Forte. Yeah, I think, and obviously there's more preps left. I think if Forte wins, I think the second choice will come out of the Santa Anita Derby. I don't know if that'll be. Go Rocket Ride or um, Practical Move, but I think the second choice in the race in the Bluegrass. I know we'll talk about it next week, but that's also shaping up to be a pretty good race. It looks like so. I know there's more time, but I think if Forte wins convincingly Saturday, he'll be probably five to two ish on the morning line in the Derby. Yeah, nope, agreed completely. Well, uh, he's got to do it first. Uh, I think he will. You think he will? Uh, but you'll have 13 other picks uh, from Gulfstream on Saturday. Yes. Yeah, we'll have Gulfstream. We'll have Aqueduct, which their spring meet actually starts Thursday. Their first yeah, turf race. Turf? Yeah, their first. No, it's next Friday is their first turf oh, okay. race. So, yeah, Naira's getting going again with some turf racing, but I'll do there Saturday and then Oakland. But Oakland looks good as well. A couple yeah. Arkansas bred races in there. They always just have to do that to you. <laughs> so, well, after uh, last week, 14 at Gulfstream is probably a walk in the park. It is a walk in the park. And I can do 14 at Gulfstream because it's like 12 stakes races. So it's uh, right. It's a fun card, and I'll be there, so more action, the better. Love it. All right, you'll be there. Uh, seen a lot of people heading down, which is great. Uh, should add to the excitement on the Twitterverse, but uh, we'll dish next week. As you said, Keeneland opens, uh, Bluegrass Stakes, Wood Memorial. We'll have it all here. Looking forward to it. All right, have a good trip. Good luck, everybody.